<laughs> hey. <laughs> the, you're both there. That's so awesome. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Jessica, how do you like my makeup? Or Jessica's probably still, what do you, what do you think about my makeup? It's good. I like it. I'm not wearing well, any makeup. Well, you don't need makeup. You're just like plain beautiful. <laughs> oh, it is so nice to see I you did. again. Did you see what she did? Jessica? She did her thing where she does her, like I can't do it because she's she's got that one. Mike. Yes. Is Jessica going to wear vampire teeth? I don't know where they are. <laughs> oh, darn. I tell you, that always freaks me out when I see people wear those vampire teeth. For some reason, it looks cute on you. I like well, thank them. you. I've had them for ages. I, I don't know where they are. I used them while we were on the road. We were in somewhere in Alabama. So I haven't seen them since like Alabama. We have been filming like out the wazoo every day. It's a mm -hmm. different video coming out. So we've That's been, like, awesome. So I can't even, some, we, we saw somebody at the La Bianca house. I was there filming and somebody came up and was like, like a neighbor oh or a resident from the house. No, somebody from Florida who came to California oh. to visit. And they're like, I was really hoping to meet somebody famous. And then I run into you guys. And I was like, oh, shucks. Jeez, guys. <laughs> but well, uh, wait a minute. For, for people listening that don't know what that means, you should tell them. They should watch your latest video. If you're not familiar with the Charles Manson murders, you <laughs> guys are doing a series of the various crime scenes. I don't know if you're also going to the cemeteries, right? We are. Oh, okay. So if anybody's familiar with Charles Manson and the murders, there's the, the Sharon Tate, the Tate La Bianca murders. And they're both one, the La Bianca murders were the day after, the night after. So we went and did the La Bianca because that house is still there, but the house on Cielo Drive is mm -hmm. not. Right. But we'll make it work. I'm trying to get everything lined up over here. So bear with me, guys. Okay. Now I'm not seeing Killer Clowns from Outer Space on Netflix now. <laughs> Is it gone? <laughs> Let me they do it. Take it off at midnight. Let me search. No, no, it was on earlier today. E oh, it, there it is. No, I got it. <laughs> All right, cool. I mean, whenever the pandemic first started, we, mm -hmm. we were doing Grim Up All Night, our watch parties every Saturday night. We started with Netflix, and it was a big fiasco because they just put that app out where it was like Netflix watch party. And everyone's wondering, how do I do it? Where do I go? Now it's yeah. like, it, you know. I mean, there are people that have been telling me, well, you know, I have it on VHS or I have it on Blu-ray or whatever. I go, good, just just cue it up, play it, and we'll, we'll wing it, you know. We have the same experiences, yeah, with uh, yeah. even YouTube. Whereas, like, if you have it on disc, because if you don't have you need multiple devices. Right. So half the people are just like, I'll just pop in my Blu-ray or DVD, and it's like, that's perfect, because you don't need to be at the exact same second we all are. It's, it's a watching right. experience. Right. So, um, yeah, and it's kind of cool to say, okay, uh, I don't know where you guys are, but I'm at the part where this thing happens, and that thing's happening. Like, right yeah. now, I have it on pause at the MGM Lion. Oh, uh, where, where are we at? Let's pause and sync it up. At the top of the okay. circus. <laughs> We're a little bit further than you, John. Oh, you've been already, you've already hit play. Okay, well, well we let's... got to the part where the, the, the very first time you see the very top of the circus tent. That's where okay. we, we Well, do you want right to like do an official, like get, get the champagne bottle and go. Is this uh, been a with... long time in the making? I'm so, 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 wait a minute. Someone just said that they're with cast. Everyone can join. With K A S T, I'm not familiar with that app. But we got to check that out. That yeah, sounds like they're, they're funny. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like so, so many. I mean, I thought it was only Zoom, but there's like there's a million types. Of, okay, so we're gonna officially start this. Okay, you're 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 freezing. You're scaring me. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. You're still freezing. Oh, let me just hit it. There you go. And see what happens. Waiting for Grim Life Collective. And there you are. <laughs> We're I sitting you, here waiting. You can't be popping popcorn with, with your phone app. <laughs> so 
We've Jessica's obsessed with the popcorn that you cook on the stove and you shake it. Oh, you know? the Jiffy Pop, where, where she it's found like a, it. it's like it, it's like a like a bulb that comes up. Yep, that is the coolest. Up. So Walmart is the only place, and we went there. We bought like thirty of these things. Because <laughs> our watch parties start on Saturday again. Right. On my birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Happy birthday. Thank you. So you're going to be 17? Yes. Okay. Yes. And a half. <laughs> the half is important. <laughs> and a half. Well, okay. So, let's, you want to hit play officially? Where I'm at the lion now. There's like a bunch of okay. people said that they were at the lion. Officially, anybody who, who, who said hi, Grim Life Collective, when we were gone, hello, this is our friend John. And, and, the, and I don't know who these people are. Just kidding. <laughs> No. Never trust a man in glasses. That's oops, sorry. Okay, here we go. And a bunch of people have been saying happy birthday, Jessica. So you're playing the movie on your phone that you're doing um, uh, Instagram with at the same time? Oh. No. Well, yeah. I didn't hear that. We hit. Uh, it, uh, yeah. The credits have started of a Kyoto okay. Brothers production is where we're at. Okay, I'll go. I'll go to that spot. There you go. I'm at. I'm uh -oh, at the top of the. Okay, it just said. Okay, again. Uh, so, are you guys watching this? Yeah, I can see you guys. Are you guys watching the movie on your iPhone? It's really delayed on my end. I can't tell. It's like really delayed between John and. No. We have so the you're watching the, the movie on, up in the front. Oh, on, oh, I see. Uh, not on Netflix, on just like a VH, uh, a, a DVD or something. Okay, on I'm Netflix, at the spot. On, on Netflix. On okay, Netflix. Okay, I'm at the. I'm at the spot where John Vernon um, is. Uh, just says there are a bunch of hoodlums. I mean, he's uh, he's just getting in this guitar. Uh, just getting in this car, and. Um, we're seeing Christopher Titus is going to cross the street drinking a generic beer. And by the way, have you guys checked out Christopher Titus? I'm wondering if he should have just came to my house. It could be the, for the PlayStation. <laughs> cool check. Her name is uh, Sid X Pirate. And she, she was there the last night of Halloween Horror Nights, and she says she's wearing her Clownzilla t-shirt, which is really cool. I was going to wear this thing here, watch. This. I was gonna wear this thing, but I thought that would be too much. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So I don't know if, I don't know if any of you guys, hell yeah. I don't know if any of you guys are, are familiar with Christopher Titus. He was he had a little bit part in the beginning of this movie, but he's got a YouTube channel that just completely rocks. He's funnier than anything. He's obviously a you know a, a well um, a, a, a well um, established um, uh, comic, and he has uh, his YouTube channel mixes comedy and you know uh, political commentary, and he's like it's like he's the raving madman. And that's what's so funny about him. Well, they're connecting. And there they are. So I reset everything. Hopefully this works. OK. And now we're on Blu-ray instead of going streaming. OK. I'm, I'm at the point. Here's the point in the movie I'm at. I'm at okay. where uh, um, they're in the back of the car, back seat of the car with the, the yellow uh, boat. And she's saying, come on, let's go see. Let's go check it out, Mr. Adventure. Ah, okay. that's the spot where they're about to. And I don't think we've seen the I'm not 100%, we haven't seen the farmer yet. Okay, so this is the farmer coming through the woods. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100% sure I, I think this was in an indoor set. Uh, it wasn't actually a forest. And that is a map painting that uh, not it's either a map painting or a float or a um, they have a glass mat that they sit, they put in front of the, uh, in front of the camera, 
and they have someone has painted this image on there and it's melted so it, they kind of you do that and mix it with a huge prop and it just this was my favorite part of the movie as far as i was concerned the whole movie could have took place in the forest and inside the spaceship and wow. i would be thrilled to death and to me there was something so magical and alluring about this scene um that um I, I just just it was just captivating when i saw it for the first time i was just so thrilled and you guys are pausing oh yeah that old man kind of does broke your break your heart that's a very famous uh, character actor um he's been in every western you can imagine okay my jessica and michael our guys are back you guys are frozen I think we're gonna have to just do a show in person. That's the only way we're gonna be able to do this right. Okay, so Pooh Bear is just getting um, uh, captivated. If you're following us, if you're just joining us now, we are watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This is the last day it is going to be on Netflix. It's, it's opened on Netflix last year on um, April 1st. April 1st, and everyone thought it was a joke. Please don't say it's a joke. No, it wasn't a joke. April Fool's Day. Yeah, no, it's coming back again. This is the curse with us. Well, that's why we're going to have to just do it in person. Yeah, like, it is it is what it is. So yeah. The last thing I heard, John, you mentioned uh, that the scene was painted on a glass painting. Yeah, sometimes what they do, I mean, there's so many techniques. I'm not familiar with all of them. I, I think this scene is where, um, you know, in the forest with the spaceship, they, they had a, a glass and the artist had painted the, um, uh, the, the spaceship with the forest to mix in with the set. So when the camera's sitting okay. there, you think there's a spaceship, but there's not. There's just this like piece of glass with this beautiful painting in front of it. They also did that when uh, with the, um, when they went to the uh, 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 the carnival near the ocean, you know that was also painted. Okay, now we're in the police station, and um, you know um, uh, John Vernon was just such a great sport with this movie. I understand that he was really into the whole um, the whole aspect and whole the whole spirit of the film. And one of these actors, I'm not sure, I think the guy that, uh, you know, the two guys that were in the park just having wine, uh, the guy that had the um, army jacket on, I think he came to my concert, along with the guy who was the, um, the stunt driver for any of the stunts like you see with cars. Uh, that guy came to the concert two years ago. It was interesting how like, I don't know where people just came out of the woodworks for this and i'm going to be reading um okay jessica and mike thanks for all your great videos there are a bunch of people giving you guys shout outs which is really cool let me see if i can get let me, let me get my sound up here so i can hear what's going on we're trying oh really you're freezing up too and you don't have any other you're not like streaming anything else huh you're just going someone's re requesting you have a child's play marathon yeah. just going live on instagram like that's it No. Grim up. Now, how are you doing your grim grim up all night? You do that through YouTube, right? For some reason, it's it's my phone. <laughs> okay, so now he's jumping on. He jumped on the hood of the car. What's that? Man. We do it straight through a laptop. We don't even use the phones at all. Oh, you you using Instagram on your laptop? No, using Instagram on the phone right now to do this. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, because I found out if when I we do it. our.
when we do our grim up all night, we actually have a laptop and a webcam. Oh, I see. But you do that through YouTube, right? Yeah, through YouTube. Okay. But you can't have people join join in with you remotely unless you have different software and what have you. Right. Correct. Okay. We're at this. We're at. I don't know where you are in the movie, but I'm where Mike and Debbie. She's hesitating whether to go into the spaceship. We're at the same spot. Yeah, we're at the same spot. Oh, good. Okay, now you guys have to say something. I've been talking so much, people are starting to complain. They think I'm boring. Uh, so, okay, someone made a comment. No, about they're the not saying that. They're they're oh, wait, Sci-Fi Channel. Wait a minute. Some guy, someone said that uh, Sci-Fi Channel tomorrow all day starting at 6 a.m. zero connection. Really? So we have zero connection. We we don't understand what what you're saying at all. It's all it's all coming through jumbo. Oh my That's goodness! Why we're not talking. Good. That's I, what we're trying to figure out. I don't know if you can hear me fine. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, and but, you um, freeze I up. My phone from like, yeah. the watcher point of view, and it comes through okay. It's just really delayed. There we go. Grim life left. Okay, uh, I'll talk to some people. I like your cave for evil elves behind jail. Oh, really? That's a that's a cave. That's actually that's a a prison for evil elves back here, which is a kind of a, like a sound diffuser. I'm gonna have those type of things all the way across the top there. As you can see, I'm watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I'll show you that. You sort of see it. Is Killer Clowns sequel getting a any traction? Well, you're going to have to, uh, Goki, you're going to have to ask MGM. They own that property. Um, if it was up to us, we would have been on the third or fourth or fifth movie by now. And there would be uh, an, an entire amusement park uh, dedicated to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, so how, okay, Kill Us, uh, once this COVID is over, hopefully we'll get a Killer Clowns live tour. Hey, that would be a lot of fun. I don't know, is anyone else watching the movie in some fashion, way, or, or shape, or form? Uh, if you are right now, they just walked into the uh, reactor room. They just entered the Forbidden Planet Chamber. That's a very good reference. Hey, dead girl. Hello, how you doing? Hope you have a good evening. I hope you do too. Thank you for checking, chiming in. Appreciate it. And it's hard to type when you got all kinds of equipment in front of your phone. Okay, here we are. Um, it's interesting. I, I can't imagine what it would be like to watch this as a kid. Because when I saw this, I was a, a full on adult. Oh yeah, the balloon dog was interesting. Someone is doing a short film where the, uh, the monster is a balloon dog. What does it feel like to hear my music on screen? Well, uh, I heard it so many times as I was working on it. And for me, the fact that people enjoy it is very satisfying. It is, is, is makes me feel um, very, very, very good. Um, it's not an ego thing. To be very honest with you, it is not an ego thing. Like I don't have any weird pride about it. It's it's just you know it's my art form is to make music, and um, when I make music, okay, let me see here what I got here. Go live with Grim Life Collective, different uh, venue. <laughs> there they are again. So someone was asking me, says, how do you feel when you see? Um, hear my music on a screen and I said well it's not really an ego thing I'm just very happy that people enjoy it um, I mean I've seen it so many I, I, I've seen it so many times when I was working on it that it's not like when I see it I'm like so proud I'm just I'm actually more happy that people liked it does that make sense it does oh good you know this movie terrified the crap out of me when I was a kid Really? No. Do you mind me asking how old were you when you first saw it? 
I'm going to say probably 11, 12. That's not bad. But no. what scared you about it? You mean Believe just it the not, way they looked? Clowns, the clowns themselves never scared me. I, uh -huh. the clowns don't do it for me. It was the one scene when the, the guy's taking out the trash and he puts the trash in the can. And okay. Shakes, and then you hear it and they, he, you know, they suck him into the trash can. That terrified right. me. Because he was like, because he was like hopeless. Yeah. You couldn't see it. It was like that unknown, faceless fear, even though right. all these were clowns. Right, right. And um, that's interesting because I've heard so many different stories, interesting stories of people, and their their fear of clowns and whether they or not they were allowed to watch this movie, which I can identify with because when I was a kid growing up, I my mother almost forbade me to watch Star Trek. She thought it was ridiculous. And I used to have to sneak to my grandmother's house and watch it on her big Philco color TV. But I only got to watch half of it. Because then my uncle would come in and switch it to Mod Squad. <laughs> so it wasn't until I was in my 20s I actually saw the um, Star Treks. But I mean, I knew a guy that his mother would allow him to watch everything, even The Exorcist, but not this movie, because she thought it would be too scary for him. That's silly. <laughs> I wasn't restricted from watching anything that I recall. So if I happened on something and I could handle it, my parents didn't think twice. And nothing scared me as a kid. No film ever frightened me except for uh, Nightmare on Elm Street did a little bit because of um, the one in the hospital. That's the only one that actually gave me the willies. Is it because he comes into your dreams? No, it was because when he was using the, the kid like a puppet with his own tendons, the, oh, the God. effects was like really good and really yeah. cool. I was like, oh. like the idea of that gave me the willies because I was, I've always been really empathic, but um, the dog. only other movie to give me the willies was Event Horizon, because that was really messed up. Mm -hmm. and that's the only films to ever bother me. Really? I yeah. mean, there there are movies that I see that, oh, you know what movie, you know, you talk about being empathetic about something, is uh, the movie AI. Yeah. When they when they go to that park, that there's that carnival where they destroy the the AI robots. Yeah. And it's just so cruel and it's like I That's felt so funny. terrible. Yeah. And the scene where like he just wanted to be with his mom for his birthday it makes me just want to. Oh God, it just totally got my heartstrings. Someone asked. Uh, There's a few comments ago. They asked you guys that the uh, the the scene in T2 at the park affected mm -hmm. you very much, uh, quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, even though that's not a Killer Clowns movie, that's okay. It's about you. It's all about you. Well, it's it's more about fear. Yes. Let's say that, right? You know. Okay. Um. T uh, two. I remember the movie, but it never scared me. But that was probably the first movie that I saw that was very real life situation. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, Terminators, but you know, that scene was just real life. You know, a playground full of kids going up. And um, I get affected more by atmospheric situations yeah. in movies and music, which is mm -hmm. one of the reasons why, you know, your Killer Clowns, how you and I and Jessica first hit it off so well when we first met you in Orlando, Florida, we started talking about your music. Mm -hmm. uh, all the blood, guts, and gore, yay, that's all awesome stuff, but you have to set the scene with, with music yeah. and with I just thought it was. visuals, which is why Killer Clowns is so still last to this day. Because, like... T2 does as well. You know, growing up, you see some <laughs> films, and you go, oh, this is totally a film, and you understand that the effects are going to be really bad, the acting's going to be bad, and the storyline's going to be kind of crappy, you know? And Killer Clowns, it was not one of those films. I just thought it was really cool, and it was really different, and it was very 80s. Mm -hmm. And really, it did it to a T. Like, everything just fell in line really well that it became this massive cult classic. And my favorite thing was always that they turned people 
into cotton candy. I thought that was the coolest thing. I, I thought the way that they used um, normal life things as weapons was just like the coolest thing, like acid popcorn and cotton candy that eats your face off and things like that was just mm -hmm. cool. One of our the, our guests here was asking, was saying that the, the puppet scene is his favorite scene, mm -hmm. which would be neat in a sequel to develop that aspect a little bit more, like tiny, tiny puppet killer clowns. Did they ever make like a um, an official killer clowns puppets or toys when the movie came out? Um, I think the the Kyoto brothers from time to time make a variation of theirs. Funko yeah, Pops. Funko. Funko. Those are the, those yeah. are the only ones I really know of, is the Funko Pops. Mm, the reason why I really love it too, because it's not special effects, it's actual animatronics. And, and there's like country. lots of practical effects. Yeah, there's a lot of, well, you know, the Kyoto Brothers, the, the, the filmmakers of this movie are very big on um, uh, puppetry. This is so weird. I know. I know my friend that watches this scene here, where they're in the drugstore. He freaks out because he had made all the sound effects, and there's no sound effects in here because the place that they went to mix it was very uh, uh, kind of overlooked. That line my gla align the circles up to the my eyes so it looks really creepy. I love it that. Um, uh, the actor that plays the uh, police officer is just the flat out straight man. I just love that. I love the delivery on those lines. The Killer Clowns March is easily one of the coolest pieces in cinematic history. Thank you very much. Where do I, uh, do you have a uh, PayPal account that I can uh, pay you for that wonderful, those wonderful kind words? Thank you. Okay, are we at the same place? I think we're, we we're are at the same, minutes. you and I. We have, yeah, we're at the knock your block off scene. And um, we've got about 50 mi more minutes to go. Uh, you know what? I looked at the interview, the original uh, interview we did for for your YouTube channel. And it was interesting because I said one of the, one, a movie that I admire very much was Richard Elfman's Forbidden Zone. And and you really responded to that because that was a, a very a favorite movie of yours as well. Very bizarre, without being pretentious. Now this scene supposedly everyone thinks this is the scariest scene in the movie, where the little girl notices the clown with the mallet. Okay, I lost my my uh, co-hosts, but everyone thought this was the scariest scene in the whole movie. That it, that close up of the clown when he's doing this. That is pretty, you know, when you see it on a big screen, it's pretty intimidating. And I wonder if this little girl, this little girl, the actress that played this little girl, she contacted me on Facebook a while back. I thought that was really cool. You know, Jumbo is kind of very, very, very creepy. I, wonder, I didn't know if you did that. Now, did you do that on purpose? You did that on purpose, right? Who did? Uh, request. I didn't like just call hey! you out. I didn't just call you out. You did it. Is this? <laughs> no, I, is, is I, hit, this... I, I just wanted to say hi. Well, this isn't my adorable. This is Johnny Bronto, right? <laughs> yeah, nobody's daughter. <laughs> this is the cool. You got the coolest name in the world. Now, uh, Johnny Bronto is from Haunt Scene. He's another YouTuber, but he is not the Grim Life Collective. Um, the Grim you're gonna be on my show in a couple of weeks. They hit when they came out here to LA. They hit the ground running, uh, doing all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. I love, and, I love it. really cool. Yeah, yeah, and there's their their uh, their frequency and their quality is just gets better, and uh, you know, and they have they have they have a very unique style. Yeah, you know, he he says he was telling me this. I don't know if he wants me to say this. He goes, "What do you think about the way I talk? I do like Captain Kirk." pauses and i talk with my hand a lot i go that is the coolest thing that's what makes you unique man and i thought maybe he maybe he used to do magic because <laughs> he does that he plays with the camera lens yeah. so johnny bronto how are things going uh everything's going good we just uh we actually just started our uh, our seventh season about a month ago 
and uh, we booked uh, Grim Life Collective. They're going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, man, after a couple of months after last spooky season, we're we're just getting back to it. And uh, it was, we're having a different variety of guests. We'll have to have you back on the show at some point. And oh, uh, I'd love to, love to. You know, there's going to be there's going to be a lot, like, there's a lot of things developing. Yeah. And so uh, I'd love to uh, share them with you. Um, and I was really thrilled to do uh, an appearance a couple of weeks ago. I'm doing one this coming this coming weekend. No, no, is it this weekend or the next? No, weekend after next. And then I'm doing something in Las Vegas with the Grim Life Collective. We will be in person, so oh. we'll have an actual connection, <laughs> a real connection, <laughs> a real connection. And by the way, it, it, with respect to the Grim Life Collective, we're coming up the scene where the kid is throwing stuff in the dumpster and he's about to get eaten by the baby clowns in the dumpster. And this was uh, Mike Collins most uh, scariest scene when he saw this when he was 11 years old. This was the most terrifying scene <laughs> that gave him nightmares. If you can imagine that. How many people actually got their fear of clowns from killer clowns? Uh, I actually went to a Barnum and Bailey circus oh. in Long Beach where there's a train that actually pulls up. Um, so a hooligan. Yeah, we're hyped for the waxworks release too. So there was actually a train that pulled up into um, Long Beach, California, with the elephants, all the animals and the performers and the whole thing. We were oh. in a tent and it was hot. It was miserable. And there were clowns and they were just so creepy. I just thought they were creepy. I just would I pray that none of them noticed that I was even alive and thank God they didn't because there were kids they would go to to try to do magic tricks. Nine times out of 10 kids were crying out of complete terrifying fear. There's just no one. But then I've seen some Hard clown perform. Then I've seen some clown performances where people are absolutely delighted by it. So it's, it just depends on the environment and the performers and what have you, you know, so. I mean, it's, um, I, I, um, now, uh, your co-host is not there with you. He's not. Okay. Not tonight. Okay. Tell her I said hi. I will. And that, uh, Amy and I are going to be there, uh, in Orlando with Grim Life Collective. We're okay. going to be, just happen to be there at the same time, um, for the Halloween Horror Nights. And I think I will, I'll be doing some appearances for the album. Okay, cool. You know, yeah, now, I mean, the album, there's, there's two things happening. There's the original album on vinyl, and then there's going to be another one. It's called, we don't know what the name, but right now the working title is the Magic, o Magic Original Soundtrack album. Yeah. So that's a totally different thing. Uh, and that's, that's going to be next year. So, uh, and I'm working on it now, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be playing bass on it. Oh, I was going to get my bass guitar, but um, I don't want to distract people with my horrible bass playing. Um, anyway, so how are how are things going? How besides that, how are things going? Things are you? going. Good. Um, I I got half my I've got I got like a couple weeks ago. Got my second one lined up for next week. Uh huh. Get that out of the way and uh we're just starting to plan i mean we've got all kinds of uh, conventions and things that we're doing uh here uh mm -hmm. starting april and and we're, we're just get to it all the way through spooky season that's good that's excellent do you guys do you guys get to go into hhn hhn for free no because i get people someone just asked me my pal bryson asked me he said, can I be your plus one when you go to HHN? Like, they think like, I can get in for free. Unless you're, like, top tier. No, I don't uh -huh. think they let anybody to HHN for free. Well, I remember, I mean, uh, I had to be very polite and say, hey, guys, you know, to the uh, the administration over there, I'll be coming over there. I hope to see you and hang out. I got some gifts for you. And, you know, I'm sitting there wait, wait you know, about to buy my ticket. You know, because I don't want to like say, "Hey, give me free tickets," and they say, "Oh yeah, come to this gate, and then someone else will pick you up and bring you." Oh, that's cool. Or like a legit celebrity. I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just a little guy. Oh, I, oh, that's very nice of you to say that I'm a, a legit uh, a celebrity. That's very nice. 
people that are watching, when, uh -huh. when, when Mr. John Masari was here in, in Orlando for the Killer Clown stuff, it was a big deal. Like, it was like, you would have thought Elvis was there. Everybody got their oh. picture. It was, it was really, it was really, really, really cool. Well, I thought, I, you know, the fun, most fun I ever had was meeting people in front of the ice cream truck. And I think I should have, you know, had I known that was going to be there, because there was an itinerary for that night. And I had to stick with the itinerary. Had I known, I would have just stayed there the whole night. Oh, oh so, so, so how it works. So when you, when you get in for free, they hand you a ticket and an itinerary and be like, okay, you got to be in front of the ice cream truck at, at 10 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. There were certain <laughs> things I had to do. And so, um, you know, when I came back to L.A., which they did not get me in for free, except the very first night, the opening night, uh, I decided that, you know, it might be a cool thing to hang out at the entrance and just meet with friends of mine that we, we, we just sit and talk. And I tell people on Instagram, I'll be there, you know, shout out, say hi. And if you have something for, for me to sign, I'll be happy to sign it. And it was so interesting because I flat out thought that the management would not like that. They loved it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they asked me to go to the gift shop. Oh. If I would sign stuff. So one night um, I signed stuff for about two hours and the manager of the store came up and said, we have, we're out of stuff. We, we're sold out. People would just like buy stuff and I would sign it. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. You know, the, you know, it's like people being, it's, it's nice to see people happy, you know, and my friend here, she's on here. You'll see her. Her name is Sidix Pirate. Sid X Pirate. She was there uh, with me, and she was she and her boyfriend were the last people to go into the Killer Clowns house at Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood um, uh, Universal Studios. That was really a lot of fun. We were the the absolutely last people group of people to go through on the last night. That's awesome. Yeah, we usually go the first couple weeks pretty hardcore, and then that we are. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, we do every haunted attraction in Florida. Then we start going out of state. We do road trips. And the long-term goal of my show is we want to do one, like, haunt in every state. So we're, like, mm -hmm. we're gone. So, oh, then that's we, awesome. People in HHN throughout. And we definitely hit it up at the end. But, man, the days of going every night, man, I, I, I'm too old, too old for that these days, man. I got to go. So. Well, um, I, I got to communicate with uh, – a grim life here we're texting because they're having they're having some kind of i just wanted to uh, pop me just hey well i'm really happy do you want to hear a little bit of trivia really quick oh uh, i yeah, i probably won't know the answer unless it's basil peladoras uh, no i'm gonna tell you a little bit of trivia so the op the red carpet night okay two a month a full two months before the um halloween horror nights um uh, i asked everyone have you guys got a call for the red carpet night for Halloween Horror Nights for the attraction that we're in? N nothing, nothing. So I had a good friend. Um, her name is Sabrina, and she's a, a, a PR um, person, a really good PR person. And I asked her if she could set us up to get everyone on the red carpet. And she, we got it all set up and everything like that. And I go to get my my pass right to show up for the press pass and press the press you know the press there's a lineup where the press talk to you mine said guest it did not say talent <laughs> and so what they did is they kind of shoehorned me so there's people from vanity fair saying wait a minute okay the cure brothers these people who are you uh i'm john sorry i'm the composer okay could you like stand off to the side because on Could their you, card, water? they take they take a picture, and they that data of who's in that picture is now on the card, so everything's properly in order, right? There was only one. I think it was the L.A. Weekly and the L.A. Times that took the time. Said, "I'm sorry, so you're the composer. Okay, what's your name? How do you spell that? Put it in." And they had me in there. Otherwise, it's very intimidating. For, you know, you have photojournalists. From Vanity Fair, telling you get the hell out of the camp, out of the pick, out of the frame. It wow. really sucks. But yeah. you know, you just have to suck it up and say, okay, okay. But I, you know, and then the curator says, no, no, no. John's got to be in the picture with us. Okay, we'll take a picture with him and a picture without him, because <laughs> I wasn't on that list. You know, oh. they don't mess around. You know, because 
if they get something wrong, you know, they could potentially get sued. So they really stay I, stay if, by the rules. What if what if them getting something wrong was not including you? It, yeah, but I'm not going to sue them. But the point is, it's just like was really weird, you know. And what really cool is the LA Times. I think it was the Hollywood Reporter. Also, you know, they wanted to know my name or something like that, you know. So I felt good. So I got to say hi to my friend uh, Tuba Life LA. He's a tubist, and he's a really good tubist. And he played on the uh, not only at the concert uh, that we had, the live concert. He also played on the, the uh, album, the um, the um, uh, reimagined album, which was really cool. And now, now you bring out the talent. <laughs> you waited all this time. Now, who is that? This is Oogie. This is a dog. I, I've had him since. Uh... I've had him since the end of November. Uh, um, unfortunately, my I, I and not to, not to bring everybody down or whatever, but I had uh, my my dog had passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. It was, it was kind of a bummer, and I got this guy at the end of November right afterwards, and his name is Oogie. Mm -hmm. His 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 full name is Oogie Boogie. Uh huh. Oogie Boogie Man from Nightmare Nightmare Before Christmas. So he's my he's my good boy. He's my good boy. He looks like a champ. Yeah, he's so good. He's such a he's so he loves people. He will go after squirrels and rabbits and armadillos and everything, but but he loves meeting new people. If you're a human being, he will love you. And so he's he's probably good. Uh, gets rid of all the varmints. Oh, he brings me lizards because in Florida we got little lizards running around. Several times he's brought that's good eating. Yeah, he, he's like hey hey dad, I brought you something. You know, so he's good. Boy. Well, you keep him away from the the uh, the the gators, right? Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm far enough inland where we don't. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are gators around, but I don't live anywhere near a lake. So, mm -hmm. so. he, I, I, I got him from a foster thing called Compassion Kind. Um, they told me he was two, but he's got to be around like one or so. He was oh, actually so he's he's really a baby. Yeah, he he was a rescue from Puerto Rico, so they wow. they brought him here and I adopted him, and uh, I got lucky because I knew the person that run it. Uh, runs the thing and if, if he would have hit the website he would have been gone but because mm -hmm. two of them i got like first dibs you know mm -hmm. yeah. it's really cool he's a good boy he's a good, good boy I live i li i have a conservation area that like backs uh -huh. up vision and it doesn't have any like lakes or swamp or anything in there but it's got all kinds of creatures and stuff running around and he, he always wants to go in there and it's just like no i'm good right i'm good no i have to ask you some geek geek out questions sure okay so I'm talking to you on my phone. I tried to hook up Instagram and do my story through my computer with all my audio gear and stuff, and it just wasn't happening. So how are you doing it? Uh, I'm on my phone. Oh, so it's just straight on your phone. Yeah. Instagram doesn't let you do something. It doesn't, it, technically it's possible, but you can't do like a full on like show um, mm. through Instagram. So you, you aren't doing anything wrong, it's just, Wait. Okay, so but, so there are just features that don't exist on the uh, internet on on the com the P the computer application, right? But but on Instagram now you can have up to four people in one of these, so that's actually pretty cool. Oh, so the the screen splits in four. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Okay, there's uh there's someone that's saying hello, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be at the uh, Anaheim Garden Walk, uh, I think on the tenth. So that's gonna be really cool, you guys. I need to get well, listen, man, if you got to go, I understand. Yeah, I just wanted to pop and say hi, but that let, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, you know, uh, I was, we had talked about this because Grim, uh, uh, Mike, and Jessica were saying if uh, some people that they know um, or want to chime in, we can get up to four people uh, effortlessly. And, and I'm glad you chimed in. Too bad we, we all couldn't be in together. Yeah. That would have been that would have been so oh, cool. Some other time, we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I got to make um when I save this, and I make it into a um uh, a video. I'm gonna edit out all the yucky parts, and just keep the good stuff, and then add you in. Yeah, yeah just as edit, well. Edit me out and just keep the dog because he's the real star of everything. Oh, okay. Oh no, that's okay. Okay, um, Mike and Jessica, if you guys are there. They just texted me because uh, I get texting on my phone. Come on and join in with us. Say, uh, hang out with Johnny Bronto. 
Johnny Bronto from Hansi. I mean, that's like the coolest name to say it with the DJ voice. Thanks okay, for letting man. pop in here. Appreciate everybody. Love you. Bye, everyone. Say bye to Johnny Bronto. Bye, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Enjoy. All right, John, I'll hit you up sometime, okay? Take care. Yes, please All do. Right. All right, bye-bye. Hey, Bryson, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Where's the Where's the uh, pretty girl? There she is. Hey. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. We're going to see. There's probably other people that are going to join in. My pals, uh, something happened with the uh, Grim Life Collective's uh, connection. So it's like you guys are like filling in for them. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. So anyways, are you actually, you're not actually watching the movie too? No, not tonight. We did yesterday. Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, it's too much. Right now they're at the part where um, they're about to go into the, uh, go to the um, carnival. And there's that scene. I don't know if you remember, there's that scene where the, the car is driving toward the carnival. And that's a scene where it's like they actually use a um, a glass a, gla a piece of glass that they paint the scene on, and they put that up against the landscape, and it looks like, you know, there's something there that normally wouldn't be there. Right. Yeah. Well, you you we've got we've got like 18 other people. Do you want to say anything? Uh, other than uh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron's in here. Hi, Aaron. Hi, friend. Oh, also, Halloween Depot is here, and they're really awesome. They hosted me at their, they had a really cool uh, gathering of people. I think there's probably like 1,500 people that came. It was really awesome. So he was saying, I'm not sure about everyone else, but when I watch Killer Clowns, the songs stay stuck in my head for days. And I don't know if that's a good thing, <laughs> but when uh, I was asked to speak to the scared performers at, at um, over here in, in uh, Universal Studios and I just like commented on how brave they were to have to listen to that music over and over and over and over again throughout the throughout the night. John, you said you were gonna be at uh, uh Orlando, didn't you, earlier with uh, yeah, we Amy and I are planning to be there for maybe uh, a few days, uh Halloween horror nights. I think we're gonna be uh you know, we'll have the, I think, I think by that time the vinyl will be out and uh, maybe there's, maybe there's a music store or two or a Halloween mm -hmm. shop or, or, you know, a horror shop or something like that. I have a friend that he has a really cool thing. There they are again. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because when I was with um, Haunt Scene, it's like we were talking about you all the time. No. <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure it'll even grow bigger than that. But here's the great thing about Grim Life Collective. They have minimal stuff uh -huh. and they don't obsess about it. All your stuff is content subject. Exactly. You don't let you don't you don't let the fact that you don't have this particular gear or that bit although you do have some really awesome gear. You take just what you need to get the job done. Exactly. Like the biggest thing for us whenever we're filming anything is image stabilization you know uh -huh. um we used to have a camera that was like really really you know i wouldn't say high def but it was you know, quite a bit it's, it's we still have it yeah we still have it it's just right. it's good if you only have it sit in one spot but whenever you're moving around we had to change up cameras because of the image st stabiliz stabilization on it so that's the stabilizing right there well, no. <laughs> that's the image table. How does, that's a cool screen. What a great app. What great, what app makes like a picture appear in the screen like that? It's me. Hey. <laughs> but to be honest, this little tiny thing right here, uh -huh. this is that Canon G7X Mark II. They have another one out. And everywhere we go, this comes with me. This is what 100% of our, vi our videos are filmed on. Wow. And it's just all about lighting, using natural lighting and image stabilization to get the best. But then you're, but then you're, you edit inside your iPhone. Yeah, I, I take all the footage from that to the iPhone and do all the editing and scoring and everything on there. But That's incredible. Better tablet or an iPad yeah. or i 
what do you call it? a Mac, whatever. MacBook. I'm not good at these yeah. things. Well, Which, I really like your, um, I really like your uh, drone work as well. You did, uh, I forgot, I, I, I cannot remember. It was a horror movie that was shot in a, uh, in a uh, cemetery. It was, the movie was black and white, but you went through the cemetery with your drone and it was just stunning. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've got the drone uh, since we live in like the heart of Hollywood right can't fly a drone legally here it's tough yeah so you can, we, you can only go how many feet can you go without having to have a permit well here in Hollywood proper I don't think that you can even fly it but usually you can fly it up to 300 400 feet that depends uh-huh but we have a lot of videos planned out in the desert and mm -hmm. We're going to be meeting up with you in Vegas, so we're going to be taking the drone out in the, the desert here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just have fun. Oh, that should be awesome. So you won't have to worry about getting a flight plan. Correct. Well, it's not so much a flight plan. It's just and you got to stay away from – we're good. Uh, you got to stay away from uh, flight paths of airports. Right. Well, you know, f uh, I, I don't know if you ever saw a posting I made. You may have – I realize you're too busy. You can't be following me and all the crazy stuff I did. But not too far yep. from from where, um, not too far from me in the Hollywood Hills, there's someone tried to build a castle, like a small castle, and you can see it on Google Earth in in vivid details. And if you're uh, a brave uh, explorer and some semi, semi uh, rock climber, uh, you can get to this place. And that would be the perfect place. Hi, Jessica. That would be the perfect. Hi, Spooky Jenny. Um, that would be the perfect place for a drone. I say we yeah. do it. We need to get yeah. and do a Grim Life Collective video. Yeah, we can. We you mean you, you can see uh, the uh, Hollywood through the eyes of John Sorry. Yes. The places that I find memorable. We can do that. I'm sure yeah. you got a whole bunch of stories that people but, don't know. Well, you know, yeah, I got a whole ton of stories. I mean, it's like, I'm, you know, I, I don't know how to say this properly, but I'm old enough now to go into Musso and Frank's without being harassed. Yeah. Because when I went in, I thought when I was like 19, I go, oh no, I was 21. I was drinking age. I go, I gotta go to Musso and Frank's. That's the, thing, that's the place that's been open before World War One, And I go in there and they're looking at me like, uh, are you in the right place? Maybe perhaps you were looking for something else. And they actually tried to usher me out. <laughs> and they said, um, well, no, I'd like a table. Do you have a reservation? No. Well, then you'll have to wait outside. Like, like outside, outside. You can't wait in the waiting area. Like, don't even come in here. And so finally, when they had a seat ready, they like hit me on the back of the head with the, uh, with the menu. <laughs> and they sat me like somewhere obscure. Like I couldn't, like they wouldn't sit me at the bar and I couldn't sit at the sit down grill. It was like some place way off in a corner because I just wasn't like the vibe of the place, which is basically establishment Hollywood, you know, cause everyone walking in there were in, I mean, I was dressed really nice, but I wasn't in a suit, you know, and the girl I was with wasn't in a gown, so. Yeah. So, so like, when we go, we'll have to get we'll have to get all gussied up. I'll wear a gown. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> well, Jessica, you have you have gown like stuff. I yeah. love dressing you, up. You really rock. You really rock that look. You know. I don't know. You really rock the, or your gown could have like the, um, you, you know the the thing that you have with the bat with the wings, that's uh -huh. gown like, you know. That's gown like. Yeah, no, I know. We, I don't think that they would count that as much as I would, but I would definitely bring it anyway. Yeah, I know. It, I went there with Amy. It was we had a lot of fun, you know, because we we got all uh, she got all dolled up, and I was all, I was in a suit, and they, uh, you know, and I got the royal treatment because I guess I'm the right age. <laughs> this gentleman looks respectable. You've been here for so long. We were driving down Hollywood Boulevard, and the, the hillside said Holly John. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, I'm dead serious. See it right here. 
my uh, my uh, my nephew he calls me Johnny XL, like like junk junkie XL, Johnny XL. But that's the only nickname I do have. No, but I got there's some interesting places like. I, I would I mean, you don't have to be it doesn't have to be part of your video but for you guys I would just like to show you where I kind of grew up like after when I was finishing UCLA when I was finishing finishing school I I found a really cool little apartment in, in the heart of Hollywood and I also I had a part-time job then it became a full-time job for a while working at a um, a warehouse downtown in LA and I have some very specific memories. And I actually wrote music during that time. Uh, Not professionally. Oh, look, it's a la bellissima. Amy. 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 She's Good not day. saying anything. I love her. There's Jessica. She's over there. And everyone yeah, my else. gorgeous Jessica. Um, so anyways, I, I was writing music that it, to, to this day plays on various things throughout the world. You know? Yeah, I mean, it was music. I was inspired to write. It was like I was totally, there was like this period of my life I was totally interrupted. That's why I tell younger people starting out in the business. I mean, what you got, what, it, what you got on your hands is a lot of time. You know, uh, you're not, uh, um, you're not uh, uh, sequestered with responsibilities. So you could use the time to create. And would you agree with me? <laughs> she would agree with me. I was telling him how we got all dolled up and we went to Musso and Frank's. Oh, that was so much fun. And we got the red carpet treatment because we looked the part. <laughs> oh, I wish I remembered the one actress name that like totally hit on me in the bathroom. Oh, know? my goodness. Yeah, there was an actress that was in one of the TV series that, um, that thought Amy was an actress from another series. <laughs> she was from... Um, uh, what was the pr prison break? Oh, she was in Prison Break. She was from Prison Break. Yeah. And so what are you guys drinking, by the way? Uh, Shack Top. Shack Top. Belgian White. Oh, I got I should have had, I should have got something. All I got is this, this big thing of water. I got the water too, Chaser. <laughs> so, hey, John and Amy, I, I don't know if you saw, probably, because I've been posting it, retweeting it all over Twitter. Uh, tomorrow is the grand opening, a uh, reopening of uh, uh, Amoeba Music. It's on Hollywood Boulevard. Is it across from uh, the Hard Rock Cafe? The Har it's across from Funko. OK, oh. it's on the other side. I got gotcha. you. Across the street. It's like near Gower, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, So it's on the south side of the street from Funko Pop, is what you're saying? You. Pretty much. Yeah, uh, the same building as the, the West End, the W. It's right next to the metro yeah. stop. It's in that new high rise, the very first floor. They went from a cool place to another cool place. Wow, it's not like they moved far away. For some reason, I was imagining they were gonna be somewhere far away. That is really cool. I guess, I, I wonder what's gonna happen to that. Uh, we could walk there if we wanted to. That property. Yeah. You know, the, the, the current, um, the current picture, the current, I'm sorry, the current, uh, well, the old one, which is now the old Amoeba, which had that weird atomic punk 60s vibe to it. I wonder what's going to be in that building. I don't know. Still yeah. by today, it's, it's still blocked off. It's got those poster walls up on it. So we'll be all masked up and you know, ready and social distance. But we'll be there tomorrow for the grand opening. So you're going to be there tomorrow. Wow. I wonder if I think I should come. I would think you guys should come. I don't know what it's oh. going to be like, but I'm excited. Yeah, I think maybe I should just go and just show up, and maybe yeah. maybe I can be your roadie. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe we'll be your roadie. I'll carry, I'll carry your equipment. Uh, if you guys are going to make it, we'd love to see you there. We can all... Well, you know what? After, after this thing, by the way, we're at the spot where Clownzilla is just picking up Dave. Yes. yes. Weird. And he's about to poke him in the nose, and the the the, uh, the movie's almost over. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me. We kept trying. The movie kept playing. We we're still yeah. Well, that's good. That's but good. And Johnny Bronto from uh, Haunt Scene says, loves you guys and says hello. And you got you got you're supposed to be on his show in a couple of weeks. Yes, April thirteenth. Oh, I thought we we're supposed to be in Las Vegas. 
We're going to Vegas on the the, the weekend 17. of the 17th. That's the okay. Dublin Monster I Down. I see. And then two weeks after that, we're going to be in San Francisco doing a TV show. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's a uh, Fright Night. Uh, creature Features. Creature Features. Cre creature Features. Gotcha. And that's like one of the oldest running um, uh, shows, like right? Horror host, campy B-rated movie shows here in California. So you know, I I I, I think it's a Northern California thing. I don't rem I don't remember seeing it down some, here. Some people uh, down here know about it, so we yeah. Should, I mean, we're gonna they probably have... they probably get it on on cable or something like that. Let me put some more light so we can see Amy. Yeah, I, for a second, Jessica moved out of screen, but for a while, did you notice the dynamic there? There's there's me right here, right there, and then there's Amy behind, and there's Jessica. <laughs> we were gonna do a thing where we can get like four people in there, but I don't know who. Uh, um, okay, so Spooky Jenny, she co she's a co-host of the haunt scene. She'll be with you too. Okay. Wait. Uh, she's just. She just. Uh, she, I'm just reading people's comments. I'm. I'm. So, I'm my my own a production assistant reading the uh, comments of people. So wait, Spook Jenna. Jenna. I think we said. Yeah. Wait. You're going to be where? I'll be there for haunt scene co-host. You for your. She's the co-host on haunt scene. Ah. Okay. Cool. Cool. She's Johnny Bronto's co-host. Yeah. Anyways, we're at the point here where the guys are fighting with the ice cream and the movie's about to end. And I, so we're going to we're going to say goodbye pretty soon. I have a question. And, okay. Okay. So this might be a question for for the Kyoto brothers, but uh -huh. maybe you have some sort of story that goes along with it. If not, that's perfectly okay. The infinite, okay. the famous Nick on a stick. Why? Oh, it's lick a stick? Yeah, it's the ice cream. The Nick on a stick is what they call it, right? I thought it was the lick a stick. They, um, in the movie, there's there's the Nick on a stick, and they also had it down at the um, Halloween Horror Nights, and it said Nick on a stick. on. on Maybe the they stuff. spelled it wrong on purpose. Cause, awesome. You know, I just didn't get an inside joke that what have you not, but... Yeah, probably probably because they wanted to stay stay out of trouble, like you know, stay out of our territory and stay in PG territory. Uh, but after all these years, I realized there's there's a kill in Killer Clowns that everyone keeps missing, and um, I'm gonna do a G-rated version. It's when the Terenzi brothers uh, reveal that they have these two girls. They have this date, yeah, and they kill any chance of the uh, Terenzi brothers. Uh, scoring that night at the very beginning before our our, our craziness started happening on our end the, the technical mm -hmm. stuff see i'm just catching up see mm -hmm. you guys have been here for the entire movie we've been here for the last 10 minutes right you know that at the very beginning that instead of like a a matte painting you always hear people talking about a matte painting when it comes to making movies right right that the circus tent was painted on glass Glass. I'm I'm pretty sure it was a, a it was painted on glass. Or, uh, okay. The Kyoto Brothers they they they're experts at that stuff. Yeah, like they use films and stuff. Kind yeah. Of so films. what I'm getting at, what uh -huh. the, the end game for what I was bringing up, the oh boy, that painting, which is what you're saying. frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Um. Because Kong versus Zilla, Godzilla's coming out. I was doing research on the, the filming locations for King Kong. And there's actually a whole bunch of them here in, in Los Angeles, like actual locations. They weren't all done on film stages. And wow. uh, a lot of it happened down in like Long Beach and, you know, the port scenes. And they used a lot of glass painting. That was the first time I ever heard them say glass painting, mm -hmm. glass painting. And I was just like, oh, wow. I wanted to ask you about it. Then everything got kind of torn down. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and and of course they do. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They do, um, you know, CGI. Obviously, they could do stuff, you know, in 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 the box. You know, that's it. Okay.
Well, just thank you, Jessica. Jessica did her thing where she stuck her tongue out at me. <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Bye, everyone else. Thank you for hanging out with us in this crazy um, this crazy movie. And it'll be on. So it's, it's on YouTube. It's on a variety of streaming services. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. Take care, everyone. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye.